My name is Anne Stelarik. I'm the advanced practice nurse for the cardiac surgery division. And I welcome you and your families to this presentation to help you prepare for cardiac surgery. The purpose of this slide tape presentation is to help you and your family prepare for your upcoming surgery, to answer frequently asked questions about heart surgery, and to assist you and your family as you prepare for your return home after surgery. The presentation outline includes the anatomy of the heart, bypass surgery, valve surgery, aortic surgery, preparation before surgery and recovery after surgery, and getting ready to go home. Here at the Heart Institute, we do between 30 and 32 open heart surgery procedures every week. The schedule is designed so about half the patients come from home for surgery. These patients are elective and the other half of the patients come from the hospital. These patients have had a diagnostic test and because of the amount of disease the patient has, their symptoms or perhaps where the disease is located, these patients wait in hospital for surgery because they cannot wait at home. There is, however, a third group of patients, and these are patients who have emergency situations. These occur, and it doesn't matter what the schedule is, these patients need to go to surgery. This means a patient who has been scheduled may be canceled, even at the last minute because of an emergency. In this case, another surgery time is organized. Some patients go home and return for another surgery date, while others stay in the hospital and the surgery is done on this admission. The average surgery time is somewhere between four to six hours, unless your surgeon has told you otherwise. And you go to the operating room about 45 minutes before we start. You can expect to be in the hospital somewhere between four and seven days on average. It's important to plan for your recovery at home even before you come to the Heart Institute. You'll be very tired after surgery, be unable to do some of your household chores, and will not be able to drive for between four to six weeks after discharge. For these reasons, you need to make arrangements for someone to stay with you the first two weeks until you're stronger, someone to help you with transportation and your household tasks. If you don't have anyone to stay with you, you need to consider convalescent care. Convalescent care is provided usually in a nursing or retirement home setting, depending on your community. There are several levels of care at these institutions and the cost is based on this. The location of the heart. The heart is the size of a fist and is located in the center of the chest behind the breastbone. To operate on the heart, in most instances, the surgeon has to cut through the breastbone. One of the major rules after heart surgery is protecting this breastbone while it heals, and we will talk more about this a little bit later. The heart is a pump. The heart is a muscle that pumps blood around the body through a series of pipes or tubes called arteries and veins. The left side of the heart receives oxygen-rich blood from the lungs, and the left ventricle, or pumping chamber, sends this blood out through a large artery called the aorta that branches into smaller and smaller arteries that go to all parts of your body. The various parts of the body then take the oxygen out of the blood, and the oxygen-poor blood is returned through the right side of the heart through tubes or pipes called veins. The right side of the heart pumps the blood to the lungs where again it picks up more oxygen and the cardiac cycle or the heart cycle begins again. The heart's blood supply. The heart muscle, like every other part of the body, needs its own oxygen-rich blood supply so it can do its work. These arteries are called coronary arteries. They branch off the aorta and spread over the outside surface of the heart. The right coronary artery supplies the bottom part of the heart. 
The left coronary artery has a short section before it divides into the left anterior descending coronary artery that supplies the front of the heart and the circumflex artery that supplies the side and back of your heart. Heart disease. Heart disease is a general term for a variety of conditions that affect the heart and blood vessels. The most common form of heart disease is coronary artery disease, or we call it CAD. Over time, plaque, which is made up of several substances including cholesterol, builds up on the inside wall of the arteries. This buildup is called atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. Atherosclerosis can cause a narrowing in the arteries to various parts of the body, slowing or blocking blood flow. Poor blood flow to the heart can cause angina or a heart attack. Coronary artery bypass surgery is done to provide a new route for blood to travel around the blockages and reach the heart muscle so the heart muscle can do its job, that is, work as a pump. The angiogram gives the surgeon information on the location of the blockages and where the bypasses need to be done. Fortunately, we're born with arteries and veins that can be moved in order to make these bypass grafts. There are several types of grafts that are possible and the surgeon will discuss the plan with you before surgery. There are two arteries inside the chest wall called internal thoracic or mammary arteries that can be used. There are veins from the leg and you have an extra artery in your arm. Often it's a combination of blood vessels from different sites that are used. Valve disease. Each of us have four heart valves two on the right side and two on the left side of the heart. And the job of the valves is to ensure that blood goes through the heart in the right direction and does not back up. Valve problems are caused by many things, by structural problems, congenital problems, meaning you were born with them, previous infection that, that has caused damage to the heart valve, and the wear and tear of age. Valve surgery. Valves have a supporting structure called an annulus and the leaflets of the valves themselves. Sometimes the leaflets are fine, but the supporting structure or annulus is stretched. And by bringing the size of the annulus down, the leaflets touch again and the valve works fine. Other times, the supporting structure is okay, but the leaflets are damaged and they can be repaired. Sometimes both parts the annulus and the leaflets are included in the valve repair. If the valve cannot be repaired, then the other option is a valve replacement. And there are two t common types of valves used. These are the mechanical valves and tissue valves or animal valves. Mechanical valves are very durable and require you to take a blood thinner called warfarin or coumadin. It's the same thing for the rest of your life. It will be necessary for you to have blood tests to regulate the Coumadin. These blood tests are done usually twice a week at first, then once a week, and later a little less often. Tissue valves include the pig valve, which is the actual valve, and an engineered pericardial valve from a calf. These valves are not as durable as mechanical valves, but often, if you have a regular heart rate, it is unnecessary in the long run to take any other blood thinner than aspirin. Your surgeon will discuss the type of surgery and or the type of valve replacement with you before your operation. Aortic surgery. The aorta is the largest blood vessel in the body. The left ventricle or the major pumping chamber of the heart pumps blood through the aortic valve into the aorta and that oxygen-rich blood goes to all organs in the body. The aorta may become enlarged, or the other word we use is dilated, and surgery is performed to replace this enlarged section of the aorta. A tube or graft made of polyester material replaces the aorta. And sometimes, 
the aortic valve is repaired or replaced during the same operation. This will be part of the discussion you'll have with your surgeon before you go for aortic surgery. The surgical incisions. If you're having coronary artery bypass surgery, you will have a breastbone incision, an incision in your leg, and possibly in your non-dominant arm, depending on where we're taking the bypasses from. If you're having minimally invasive surgery, you'll have a small incision to the left of your breastbone, and depending on how many bypasses are being done, a leg or an, and or an arm incision. If you're having valve surgery, but not bypass surgery, the incision is in the breastbone only. Getting ready for surgery, the diagnostic process. You've had some diagnostic tests which indicate that you need heart surgery. These may have included an angiogram, an echocardiogram, CAT scans, etc. The preparation for surgery is the same for all patients. This includes assessments, diagnostic tests, blood tests, angiograms, electrocardiograms. The difference between the patients is the timing of when these tests are done. Some patients come to the pre-admission unit and have all of this diagnostic work done before they come to the hospital and they arrive at the Heart Institute the day their surgery is scheduled. Other patients are in hospital, the diagnostic tests happened and it was determined that they needed surgery and needed to stay here until the surgery was done. Other patients are transferred to the Heart Institute from other hospitals and some patients are admitted to the hospital a day or two before the scheduled surgery date. Getting ready for surgery. We make every effort to keep your, your family informed of your progress. Your medical information is private, so we ask you for the name of the person you wish us to speak to after surgery and in the event of an emergency. We will take a second name in case we're unable to reach the first person. After this, anyone calling to inquire about your condition will be directed to call your contact person or their alter your, your alternative. Please let your family know that this process is in keeping with the privacy legislation and respecting your rights to privacy. Before surgery now, all diagnostic tests and assessments are completed you will take a shower with some special antibacterial soap the night before your surgery, rinse your mouth with a special antibacterial mouthwash. The night before surgery, patients generally don't sleep well, so asking for a sedative is a really good idea, and then nothing to eat or drink after midnight. The day of surgery. You can expect a hair clipping on the surgical sites, followed by a shower. Again, a rinse with special mouthwash. Before you go to surgery, you'll be given some medicine to help you relax. We'll start you on oxygen by nasal prongs. And it's possible your doctor may have ordered some additional medicines that may be given with a sip of water. Going to the operating room. Because you'll be in the intensive care unit at least overnight, we ask your family to remove all of your belongings from your room. The only item we would ask them to keep track of is your CPAP unit if you use one. We will be asking them to bring that to the Heart Institute the day of your surgery if they're here or the very next day so you have your own unit. Your family can accompany you part of the way. Once you arrive outside the operating room, you'll meet the members of the operating room team in the waiting area. Once you arrive in the operating room, you will again meet your anesthesia doctor. The first thing that is done is a special intravenous is placed near your wrist. You may feel the anesthesia doctor checking the veins in, uh, in the right side of your neck. That may be the last thing you'll remember. The next time you wake up, you're going to be in the cardiac surgery intensive care unit and the surgery will be finished. All of the equipment that is needed to help support you during the operation and after the operation was all put in place after you were asleep. Now, I'm going to take a step back and talk a little bit about communication uh, with your family contact persons. 
The nursing coordinator will make the following arrangements with your contact person, your, your family member. If your family wishes to stay here at the Heart Institute while surgery is going on, we have a lounge on the main floor of the Heart Institute just behind the volunteer desk. Register with the volunteers if you, if you are staying here. And many families wish to stay here. That's fine. You're welcome. Some families would prefer to have the surgeon call them when the operation is over and will be happy to do that. So you will need to make a decision about where your family member is going to be, whether they'll be here at the Heart Institute or at home by a phone waiting for the call. But the first contact you're going to have from us after surgery will be from the surgeon himself. It's up to you to choose whether it's here or at home. The next time we contact you will be on the evening of surgery between 9 and 10.30 in the evening. The patient's nurse will call the contact person at during that time and again the morning after surgery between 9 and 10.30 in the morning to give a progress report. During the morning call, the nurse may be able to give the contact person more details about whether or not the patient is staying in the intensive care unit or being transferred to the third or fourth floor of the Heart Institute in the cardiac surgery intensive care unit. When you first arrive in the cardiac surgery intensive care unit, there'll be a nurse with you one-to-one -one until you're awake. You can breathe on your own and you can sit up. When you first wake up, you'll not be able to talk. The reason is there's a breathing tube in your mouth that goes down past your vocal cords and it is connected to a breathing machine or respirator or ventilator. They're all the same. Once you're awake enough to follow directions, for example, lift your head off the pillow, move your feet, squeeze the nurse's hands, and you're breathing well enough on your own, the breathing tube is removed. For the vast majority of our patients, we are able to take the breathing tube out the same day as surgery by evening. Some patients do need support with the breathing machine overnight, and a few need it longer than overnight. Even when you cannot talk because of the breathing tube, you can still communicate with your nurse by writing notes and nodding yes and no to uh, questions. Your heart rate and rhythm, blood pressure, oxygen levels, urine output are all monitored continuously. Visiting. One hour after speaking to the surgeon, generally your family can visit. Sometimes if a treatment is being given, your family will be asked to wait. To visit in the intensive care unit, your family needs to speak to the volunteers at the main floor desk. The volunteers will call the intensive care unit and escort them for a visit. Two visitors at a time, please, for very short periods and immediate family only. Please follow this procedure every time you wish to, wish to visit. There is no visiting during shift change report, which is 6.45 to 7.45 in the morning and in the evening. The recovery program starts once you are breathing on your own. The nurse and the physiotherapist will guide you with the activity program. The most important rule after surgery is to support your breastbone incision. That bone is broken and it's going to take at least two months for the bone to mend together. So the rule is no lifting, no pushing, no shoving, no heavy arm work until the bone is healed. Managing pain. Recovery from heart surgery is hard work. One important part of recovery is to work with your nurse to manage your surgical pain. The pain changes over time from a sharp pain to a dull beat up feeling. That is what the pain is like. When you cough, it's very important to support your chest incision to decrease the amount of, of pain you'll feel. There are some key principles to keep in mind with surgical pain. You, the patient, know how much pain you are having. Expressing how much pain you have is often difficult. We use this pain scale to answer the question, how much pain do you have? Zero means no pain, five is a moderate amount of pain, and 10 is the worst you've ever had. Our goal is to keep you at a level less than three. 
When you first come from surgery to the intensive care unit, we give you several kinds of medicine for pain regularly, around the clock. However, if what we give you is not enough, we need your help. Work with your nurse to stay comfortable. If you've received pain medicine and you're not getting relief, let your nurse know. Sometimes adding another class of medicine may make a huge difference for the patient. The key to managing pain after surgery is to take your medicine regularly, especially at first, and work with your nurse to stay comfortable. The recovery starts once you're breathing on your own. The nurse and the physiotherapist will guide you with the activity program to help you prevent common problems following a general anesthetic and prolong bed rest like lung infections, muscle weakness, swelling, joint stiffness and blood clots. As you progress with your activity, the nurses and physiotherapists will teach you how to do your activities without hurting your breastbone. Deep breathing exercises. Deep breathing exercises after a general anesthetic are very important to help get air to the bottom of the lungs and prevent collapse of lungs and pneumonia. The technique we ask you to use is the following. Take a deep breath in through your nose until you can't take in any more air. Purse your lips like a whistle and slowly blow out through your mouth. Your stomach should rise as you breathe in and fall as you breathe out. Breathe, doing this kind of breathing is hard work, so we encourage you to do two or three breaths in a row like this, breathe normally, again two or three breaths, breathe normally. But you should try to take at least 10 deep breaths using this method every hour while you're awake. Coughing. Coughing is an important addition to the deep breathing exercises because coughing helps to clear the phlegm or the mucus from your lungs. This will help to prevent a lung infection or pneumonia. It's common after surgery to have extra phlegm in your lungs, especially the first few days. The procedure we ask you to use is as follows. When you cough, hold your pillow firmly against your chest. Take a deep breath in and cough on the breath out. You should try to cough two or three times every hour that you're awake. Your teddy or pillow helps to support your incision and decrease the amount of pain you will have when you cough. Leg exercises. Leg exercises are also an important part of reducing any risk from general anesthetic and surgery. Exercises reduce the risk of developing blood clots in your legs, help shift the fluid in your feet, and help keep your muscle tone strong so that you, you will not feel so weak as you begin your activity program. These exercises are as simple as pumping your legs up and down like you were driving a car. And we ask you to do this at least 10 times every hour. Circles with your ankles help keep your legs comfortable uh, as you go through your recovery. Bed mobility. Every time you get out of bed, or out of a chair, your nurse or your physiotherapist will practice this technique with you. We don't expect you to be experts at it right away. When you're getting out of bed, for example, we ask you to bend your, your knees and hold on to your teddy and roll to your side. Let your legs fall over the side of the bed and pull, your, pull in with your legs to help you come to a sitting position. This takes practice but by the time you're ready to go home, you will be masters of this. Your activity level will be gradually increased during your stay. The day after your surgery, you'll sit in the chair in the morning if you're able and begin the walking program in the hallway in the afternoon with your nurse and physiotherapist. Before you go home, you'll be able to walk around the ward and climb the stairs unless you have an orthopedic reason that you're not able to do this. And you'll also be given specific guidelines for exercise and activity at home. Transfer to the third and fourth floors of the Heart Institute for recovery. Recovery is work. It's an ongoing process that takes time. And as it happens, it, patients say it's never fast enough. 
The activity program continues during your time on the nursing ward. Before you go home, you'll be asked to attend a class with a physiotherapist in order to learn the exercises that you need to do and the walking program that will be required to help you during your recovery at home. Nutrition. Patients generally have a poor appetite after surgery. Often, they're somewhat nauseated. You'll start with ice chips in the intensive care unit, then clear fluids, and gradually progress to a regular diet. Do the best you can to eat. Small meals more often may be easier for you to manage, and a good balance of all the food groups will help you heal, give you energy to do your walking program, and continue your recovery work. Continue with your deep breathing and coughing exercises and leg exercises throughout your stay on the nursing wards. Continue to work with your nurse to stay comfortable. It's a good idea to take your pain medicine regularly, especially at first. You will find you will do better if you're comfortable. And by do better, it means that you'll be walking, eating, resting, and sleeping better. Fatigue is the biggest problem for most of our patients. At first, when you do your activities, you'll need to take time out for a rest, either in your chair or your bed. Gradually, you'll find you'll be able to do more activities without taking a break. By three weeks, most patients are able to walk 20 to 30 minutes slowly twice a day and are starting to feel better, but they tell us it's six to eight weeks before they really see a difference. You'll be monitored for cardiac arrhythmias the first several days that you're on the nursing ward. A very common problem after heart surgery because of the swelling that happens and because your heart's not used to being handled is an irregular fast heart rhythm that happens in about 40% of our patients. We carefully adjust your medicines to try to get to a level where your heart rhythm is steady. Don't be alarmed if this, if this fast irregular heart rate occurs to you. We will be adding medicines to your regimen, giving you lots of diuretics, and most of the time uh, the rhythm sorts itself out. It does delay your departure from the hospital. Education is an ongoing process throughout your stay. The nurses will be helping you learn the techniques that you need to get up and down, as will the physiotherapist, how to take care of your incision, the technique you need when you take a shower, etc. Your family is part of this. It's very important to include the family in all of the teaching, and so we support the family as they prepare to assist you in your transition home. Generally, by the time you're walking around the unit, you're about ready to go home. Keep in mind it will take time to build strength and endurance. We encourage you to participate in the education sessions so that you'll know what to expect when you go home. Your family is invited as well. The more you know about what to expect, the more confident you'll be in managing your transition home after surgery. Medications. The doctors will review all the medicines you were taking when you came to the hospital, review all the medicines that are needed now, and write you a prescription for medicine that you will take from now on. Please take only the medicines prescribed by your surgeon when you are discharged for, from the Heart Institute. Your prescriptions are written for six weeks because you will be back to see your surgeon before that time for your surgical checkup. At that time, your surgeon will review your medicines with you and let you know which ones to continue and which ones you may stop. If you should run out of your prescriptions before you come back to see the surgeon, please call his office for renewals. Follow up. You're, you'll be coming back to see your surgeon four to six weeks after you are discharged from the Heart Institute unless you live a great distance away. The surgeon's office will call you with the appointment for that follow-up visit. If you're unable to come because of the distance and you want to see your surgeon and follow up, contact the surgeon's office and an appointment can be made through the CareConnect platform at your local hospital. That is, you go to the local hospital, 
uh, the, doc the surgeon here goes to our studio and you're seen in camera. While you're waiting f to come for surgery to the Heart Institute, if you have any change in your symptoms or other concerns, please call the Regional Cardiac Care Coordinator at 613-761-5090. She's available to you between 8 o'clock in the morning and 3.30 in the afternoon. After hours, please call the 24-hour number at 613-761-4708 and ask to speak to the surgical coordinator. We will do our very best to help you and guide you during this waiting time. I thank you for your attention. I hope this was helpful to you and please feel free to call the coordinator should you have further questions or concerns.